Hello, my name is Jason Ludwig. I'm Director of Bridge Preservation with the Saskatchewan Ministry of Highways. This presentation is intended to give an overview of the current condition issues we're experiencing on the Highway 35 over Saskatchewan River Bridge, uh, commonly referred to as the Old Nippon Bridge. Uh, now, this bridge itself is a 546 meter long bridge, which is the longest bridge that we have in our inventory in the province. So it's a significant structure here that, that we're looking at. Uh, the bridge has four main truss spans that are shared with a railway to carry traffic over the river, as well as roadway approach spans on either end. Uh, the roadway approach spans consist of seven spans supported by steel members and 14 timber spans. The bridge was constructed in 1931 and as such is approaching 100 years old. As will be seen through this presentation there, the uh, current condition concerns due to its age and, and condition state are, are creating uh, uh, significant uh, decision making uh, for, for the province. Uh, the, now this bridge receives, as all bridges do within the ministry, routine visual inspections. The most recent routine inspection was completed on this bridge in the fall of 2020. And out of this uh, inspection, there was a recommendation for a subsequent more detailed rope inspection to be completed to look at areas that may be of concern. That inspection was completed on June 9th and 10th. And out of that inspection came a recommendation for closure of the structure as uh, significant concerns were, were identified uh, when individuals were able to get up close during the inspection. From the recommendation for closure, the bridge branch staff reviewed this information and ultimately came to the same consensus. Uh, so it was a decision made um, by all bridge engineers who reviewed this, all shared the same view on it and, and reached the same decision that uh, closure was needed uh, to ensure public safety. Now the presentation material that I'm indicating here or showing to you is as provided by our third party consultant that completed the inspection and the uh, recommendation for us for this structure. So the scope of the inspection itself, uh, as I indicated, was intended to identify areas of concern and take a closer look to see if there are any critical defects, uh, as well to see if these critical defects had any implications to the safety of the bridge remaining in service and some high level preliminary information on what the, the long term implications of uh, these defects may have on the structure. Now this view here is a view of the underside of the bridge. Uh, you can see the concrete piers and the main spans in the background supporting the main trusses that we share with the railway. Um, in the foreground of the picture is uh, the steel supported uh, approach spans of the, uh, of the highway bridge. And the red circles indicate the areas of highest concern that were identified. Uh, so this is areas where our approach spans connect to the main steel piers for the railway portion of the bridge. So we're just run through the critical findings on the steel portions of the piers on the approach roadway spans. Uh, so the, the main concerns were uh, section loss due to corrosion on gusset or steel plates that connect various steer, steel members as well as the steel pier caps. Uh, and out of plane bending, which is a clear indication that the structure is being overloaded. Uh, another concern was potential stress corrosion cracking or the initiation of that that's starting to show, which is a, an indication of overstressing as well. Now I'll run through a number of uh, photographs from the inspection to, to give an idea of the, the condition state and concerns that we're looking at. This particular photo uh, indicates a connection plate um, shown here, triangular connection plate that connects a main pier cap with our girder sitting over top of that pier cap. Now this connection plate has significant corrosion uh, occurring to it. The six pit indicated here shows that there's six millimeters of pitting or section loss occurring on that plate. And it's a nine millimeter plate to begin with, so not, not leaving a lot of section left. Uh, including some perforations right through the member itself at a, at a critical location that connects a main pier cap in. Next photo is another location here and another location uh, of, uh, of a connection of a, of a pier cap. 
We've got some discoloration occurring, which is an indication of corrosion, uh, some more perforations and uh, significant section loss at this location as well. Uh, so th this is common throughout the structure. There are areas uh, that that uh, certainly are more advanced than others and create us more concern, but this is a, a common concern uh, for, for this age of structure. Here's another view at another location. Um, so this uh, member here is the pier cap itself with the steel beam sitting on top of the pier cap. Um, Another view of this uh, from the top indicates seven pit or seven millimeters of section loss at this particular location. Again, very close to where a steel girder bears on that cap. This particular view is the underside of one of these caps and a steel tie plate under here that's significantly corroded and perforated here. Uh, another concern that's been identified. Now this view here, it's it's looking from the top down at one of these connection locations uh, where the uh, pier cap ties into the main steel piers for the railway portion of the bridge. Now the black line that we've shown here would indicate uh, a, the correct orientation of the steel plate uh, in, in a straight uh, manner. The steel plate itself can be seen here to be bending outwards here. Uh, so this out of plane bending is is really the the highest urgency of concern for us. It does indicate that the structure has been overloaded and and was the the onus for us moving to uh, an immediate closure of the structure. This is actually another view of that same plate. Uh, with a straight edge, magnetic straight edge uh, attached to the steel. And it gives some perspective as to how much that's bent here. So you can see the unbent portion of the plate is flat with the, steel, uh, with the uh, straight edge, and it can be seen uh, just how much that, uh, that plate has been bending. Now also in this plate, uh, or this picture, sorry, it's a little difficult to see. Uh, you can see some ridges forming around these rivets, which extends right around to the other, ridge, uh, other rivets on this side of the photo. Um, this is the early indications of some cracking that uh, may potentially be forming and, and uh, be, maybe due to overstressing of the structure as well. Next photo here, again, looking from the top down at another location, at another uh, plate here with some out of plane bending. Uh, two, two views of the same plate, uh, one zoomed in on the right hand side and you can see the, the bend in the, the plate there again, indicating that the structure has been overloaded. Now I'll move on to the concrete piers. There's four concrete piers that support the main truss, which is shared by both the highway traffic and the railway. Um, so we took a look at the, the top of these piers as part of this inspection here and had a concern at the very top end of these piers with some deterioration. The critical findings for the concrete piers themselves include up to about 160 millimeters or just over six inches of material loss at the top of the piers and unsound concrete extending up to and underneath the bearings that support the main girders uh, for, for the bridge structure. As well, there's some questions as to uh, the questionable strength in the remaining concrete that is in place. And another defect identified were wide and deep cracks uh, between piers eight and nine. It was the worst location. There are other locations of this starting to form. Uh, and this can be a, an indication of suspected uh, movement of the foundation. Just run through a few photos that kind of indicate these concerns here. So this is the top of one of these pier caps. Uh, we can see some concrete starting to deteriorate here, um, some loss of material. Uh, the beginnings of some of the uh, steel embedded within that concrete cap starting to, to be exposed. Uh, this view maybe shows a more dramatic view of, of that occurring here and, and certainly a significant amount of loss of concrete. Um, it's starting to eat underneath one of the bearings of one of our approach spans at this location and creating a concern there. Another view of this here with a, a straight edge um, uh, in this in this uh, instance showing some over rotation of this bearing here uh, as well uh, can can indicate that there's this is becoming uh, overstressed uh, as well and a concern for us. Now this is a top down view of the uh, crack at uh, between uh, at both piers eight and nine uh, quite a wide crack. 
uh, which may be an indication of movement of the uh, foundation of this structure with it, which is a significant concern as well. Now, this is a view on the, the uh, just some other locations there where we've got some corrosion occurring. Uh, you can see a, a piece of steel kind of tearing away from the rest of the element in this particular uh, location here. Uh, so these kinds of concerns are throughout the entire structure, um, not located on our steel piers, um, but in other places where, where we have less of an urgency of concern, but, uh, but they do exist uh, throughout the structure. One more view here of another location on the main truss itself there where we've got a perforation um, and, and some corrosion occurring at this location as well, uh, kind of just giving a, a general uh, sense of the condition state of, of this structure. And what I've gone through in this presentation are, are really the, the concerns of, of an immediate nature that we have on this structure and, and what's caused a, a concern for, for the immediate closure. There, there are other concerns not detailed within this presentation itself, including the bridge rail, which is substandard and quite deteriorated at this state, um, would require quite an upgrade and to ensure the, the, the safety uh, of that uh, rail connection and that it met modern standards of, uh, of crash testing requirements. And maybe even more importantly, uh, we have due technical concerns and landslides uh, uh, on this bridge uh, that independent of the bridge itself uh, create concern and could cause independent closure of the bridge at any given time uh, due to the concerns of, of landsliding that we've got at this site. The, the difficulty that we have with this bridge and in, in completing any type of repair work is that any individual repair does nothing to extend the service life of the remaining structure, uh, which obviously is, is quite an old structure at this point. Um, so that concludes the, the presentation. I hope this provided a, a overview of the condition state of this structure. Uh, and I thank you for your time.